Hey cruisers, welcome to Grand Bahama Island. We have never been here before. This is our first time here. And what's so interesting is we have no idea what we're going to do. So we woke up this morning and it was pouring, just completely pouring rain. We're talking like the balcony was soaking wet. You couldn't see more than a hundred feet in front of you. And we're like, oh my goodness, what are we gonna do? Cause we had thought we might just try to do a beach day today. So we were a little bit nervous but it's almost 10 o'clock and the clouds have cleared away. It's looking sunny and beautiful. And if I look kind of across the island over there, I can see some really pretty Caribbean blue looking water. So I think it's all gonna work out okay. Super fun fact, right behind me right now, you probably can't see it because of just the angle we're standing at, but we are cheek to cheek or bum to bum with the carnival elation right now it actually came in this morning and people who were up early and out um, walking around the ship were all talking about how cool it was because the ship got really really close to us so i'm sure that it's just here to provision or something like that not really sure actually what it's doing here but it is really neat to see other ships around very very exciting that cruising is coming back so before we head ashore, I wanna to talk to you just a little bit about our awesome day yesterday. We had a sea day. We had so much fun. We decided to kind of make a day of going on the Flow Rider, which is the surf simulator on the back of this ship. Even though the ship is a little bit older, it has a lot of Royal Caribbean's best features like the Flow Rider. So we went up there and we were probably there off and on for about four hours. There being really generous with their open times on this cruise with the flow rider. And the way that they're doing it on this particular ship is that they open it up for just boogie boarding time. And then a few hours during the day, they open it up for stand up surfing or advanced surfing, or even combination time where you could go and you could do stand up surfing or you could do boogie boarding. So all three of us gave it a try. I did the boogie boarding once. And I had a pretty legit wipeout where I had like both of my feet flailing up in the air, kind of twisted my neck, ended up with a headache. So I was kind of done, but the boys decided to make a day of it. So we just sunscreened up. The boys put on their rash guards. We got prepared for the sun and it was a blast. We only took a break basically to go eat some lunch and then it was right back at it. And it was amazing. They play music up there and it just feels so fun and you just you really feel like you're on a Royal Caribbean cruise it was amazing so after that we got cleaned up and then we went and got another yet another COVID test this was the day five test that you have to take for the Bahamas so yesterday was Wednesday and it was day five of being in the Bahamas so we all had to get that day five test and it, it went great it was very non-invasive no problems at all then it was time to get ready for our formal night dinner. We enjoyed another wonderful evening in the main dining room with our awesome, awesome servers, Crispin and Ibrahim. They are just the sweetest. And the formal night menu was phenomenal. We had so many delicious things last night. We started off with a Vidalia onion tart, which was basically like a little quiche. Mr. Cruise Tips TV got a shrimp and fingerling potato salad. Junior got his usual cheese plate. He is so funny. He's been ordering the artisan cheese plate every single night on this cruise. We had Caesar salad, regular salad, just really good appetizers last night. It was just fantastic. And then for our entrees, um, our friend Chef John recommended getting the beef tenderloin, which is actually a filet mignon, but asking for them to put a lobster tail on top. So that is what we did. So basically we had surf and turf on formal night. It was fantastic. The meat was tender. The lobster was great. They brought us John butter. All those formal night cruising traditions were totally in place. Now Junior totally threw us for a loop and he ordered eggplant Parmesan. And we're looking at him like, what are you ordering? That is so, so weird, but it was absolutely delicious. And I would order it again for a main course anytime. So if you're going on a Royal Caribbean cruise, try the eggplant Parmesan, it was exceptional. For dessert, we had some kind of a pineapple cake. We had the chocolate lava cake. Oh my goodness, I didn't even remember what else we had. All I know it was, is it was great. I think we got four different desserts. I think we got like a little apple tart and gosh, I think there was a fourth, but I don't know. All I can tell you is we were probably more full last night than we have been on any of the other nights, but it was absolutely wonderful. It was just such a great sea day. 
and I wanted to give you a little recap of that because we don't vlog our sea days. So now we're packing up our shore bags and we're going to go see if we can just get a taxi cab to a beach, maybe Taino Beach, I don't know. We're gonna figure it out and just kind of be at the mercy of what happens. We're gonna hope that this weather holds. A little tip if you're traveling to the Bahamas in the near future is you do still need to wear masks when you go ashore here. I'm sure that will not last forever, but in the Bahamas it is a requirement. So be sure to pack your face masks. Also, if you're traveling to the Bahamas, another tip for you, always be sure to take your photo ID aboard with you and take lots of cash for shopping. There's some great shopping in the Bahamas, wherever it is you're stopping. And it's just easier if you have small bills with you to do some of that shopping or to pay your cab driver, whatever it is that you need to do. So let's go grab our bags and head ashore. Taino Beach or Taino Beach and it's not exactly what we expected but let me back up for just a moment and tell you how we got to this point. So we got off the ship and meandered over to the area where you're supposed to get a taxi and what they were trying to do is gather people together to take you to like similar destinations so it wasn't quite as expensive. If we had taken our own cab to get here it would have been like $75 round trip it's only 12 miles but we opted to wait just a little bit and then a few of us got in the cab and it was seven dollars per person to get here well what we didn't know because i didn't do a whole lot of research my fault when you get here you also have to pay just to enter the beach so we paid twelve dollars per person so 36 for the three of us but unfortunately that doesn't get you anything other than just the ability to walk on the beach there's you have to pay extra for a chair with shade and all of the other amenities. I have no problem paying for the water sports and stuff, but I was really a little bit disappointed that we didn't even have anywhere to sit other than in the bar to rest. But in Cruise Tips TV fashion, we are absolutely making the best of it. The beach, I mean, come on you guys, it's absolutely gorgeous here. I think what's happening here in Grand Bahama is that they're just not quite ready for cruise passengers yet. The taxi situation was really slow. There were maybe two taxis there doesn't make a whole lot of sense really for the tourism industry and this place just seems to kind of nickel and dime you so I'm not gonna say I wouldn't recommend it I'm gonna say do your research do a better job than I did of researching coming here another fact this appears to be where the Royal Caribbean shore excursion brings you if you do the beach break so you can compare prices maybe it'd be more comfortable to come on the cruise ship and maybe you'd get more but just want to be honest with you guys we um, have placed our stuff just in the sand on the beach it's just kind of sitting there but now we're going to go for a nice refreshing cool swim and we're going to check out the property and maybe get a drink at the bar get some food they have all kinds of conch dishes and some yummy looking food the staff is pretty friendly here there's people who can braid your hair there's jet ski rentals there's banana boat rentals you can get a great price on a massage down the beach you can just walk around it's really really pretty um just know what you're getting into so let's go have some bahama fun
after about 90 minutes at the beach, we decided to jump back in the cab. Since we had come as a group, we knew there was another group leaving at 1230. So we popped back in and we asked our driver to take us to the shopping and dining area. It's called, I believe it's called the Port Lucaya Marketplace. And it was really cute. Not everything is open, but there were a few shops and a few restaurants open. We were starting to develop a fierce appetite. So we stopped into a restaurant called Go Native. It just felt so good. It felt like one of those great local hole in the wall spots. There were locals sitting outside. It didn't have like that like DJ vibe that the other restaurant next door had. So we sat down, Junior ordered a burger, Mr. Cruz Tips TV got a chicken wrap and I got some delicious jerk chicken with potato salad and coleslaw. And you guys, an unbelievable, unbelievable painkiller. It was so good. I knew it was gonna be good. I did one look at the lady running the place and I was like, oh yeah, she's gonna make me a killer painkiller with just lots of spice on top. So it was great. Enjoyed some lunch and then we had just a few moments left to shop before our cab picked us up at two. And then we got in the, uh, the taxi with the group that we had come over with in the morning. And all of a sudden we were like pulling into this parking lot, like what's going on? Is is the cab driver like taking a shortcut? What's happening here? I thought we were going back to the ship. Oh, maybe he's just taking a shortcut. And a bunch of the ladies in the taxi got out and they were like going into a liquor store to get Bahamian beer. And so they offered me one. They're like, what flavor do you want? So it just surprised me, whatever you want. So they came back with a Guava Calique, which is a local Bahamian beer, 2% alcohol. It's not strong, but it is like a delicious, guava soda meets a beer so all of us in the cab had a great moment enjoying our guava berry calique on the way back to the freeport port and it's just about 2 45 and we're already back on the ship so it was a really interesting first day in freeport this is our first time as i mentioned earlier ever coming here and it, we learned a lot i think it was a really good experience if you're coming i think you know just realize that maybe in 2021, they're still recovering here. They're still opening things back up. Not everything is open to its fullest capacity, but it's fun. Get out there and support the locals, do some shopping, do some eating, have some fun. Everyone was really friendly. The food was excellent. It was a great experience. So now I think we're gonna pop up and see if that flow rider is open again, and then get ready for a casual dinner on the ship. and over the last few hours a lot has happened I have a lot to update all of you guys on so when we last left off we had just cleaned up taken a little nap after our visit to Grand Bahama and we decided to go up to the helipad for sail away the helipad is a spot that is basically at the very front of the ship where the ship sort of um, you know the bow of the ship and you can get there by taking the promenade deck all the way forward the outside promenade deck and then walking up a little tiny set of stairs. You can't miss it, it's really easy to find. Anyhow, we went out there for sail away and we got to see Carnival Mardi Gras floating off in the distance, which was a real treat. While we were up there taking some 360 footage and hanging out, we did a little Instagram Live. And during the Instagram Live, you guys, this is crazy, one of our subscribers who was watching said, hey, did you hear that a couple of guests on your ship had tested positive and we're like no somehow we completely missed the announcement the announcements on the ship are not that loud and you definitely don't hear them in your stateroom you have to be like in a public area to hear them here on adventure of the seas so we quickly wanted to find out what was going on so we you know jumped on the internet looked at some um, some information from matt at royal caribbean blog to get the whole story and it turns out that two teenagers under the age of 16 who weren't vaccinated came down with COVID, one had symptoms, one didn't, and they disembarked them and their entire family in Grand Bahama and they're flying them home immediately to Florida. So in my opinion and the opinion of most experienced cruisers, 
the way that everything was handled is proof that these protocols that they have in place are actually working. I think a few people are a little bit shaken up by it because we're here we are almost at the end of the cruise and to find out about it, it's a little bit it's a little bit surprising, but then again, it makes sense because they did all of the COVID tests yesterday. It was a routine to test everybody on Wednesday so they can get back into the United States. So wishing that family well, glad they're all doing okay so far. Apparently the other people traveling with the children didn't have it. So that was a really big update to hear this afternoon. We then kind of roamed the promenade deck, had a little snack, got a cocktail, and did a little shopping in the um, the Royal Promenade. That was really fun. Mr. Cruz Tips TV got a nice looking baseball cap. And now we are dressed and ready to go to dinner. This is our second to the last evening. Tomorrow we have another day at Perfect Day and we're really thrilled to go back and do the water park. We're even considering doing the Wave Runners, possibly. We'll see if they're available. They weren't running for a lot of the day um, when we were there earlier in the week because of wind and weather. So we're thinking about doing that, but not really sure what our plans are. But tonight, we're going to head down to the main dining room and show you our table and say good night right now. We will see you tomorrow again. Perfect day, Coco Key. But let's go enjoy some dinner. <laughs> 